Hi guys, and we're back for the Flinch Squad Circuit Moon Series Week 2 matches. We kicked off with Part 1 in our last episode, and we are back now with the second part, with all the remaining matches from Week 2. So, without further ado, let's get in to see what the matchups are, just to recap what we've got going into this week. You can see on your screen in front of you, we have Pogamati versus Johnny Hacks. You saw the result there, Johnny winning 2-0. What a great match to kick us off. We also had Yorine versus Krim as well. A very long match, weather war, crazy weather war, and Krim just edging that out in both games, winning that 2-0. We had Bebe and Stu as well to finish off yesterday's episode so we've got a flurry of matches going into this one today it's going to be extremely exciting Stu taking the win against Bebum yesterday so we're going to kick into it today with Worms Eye versus Luigi what a great way for us to kick into this episode today as we are going to see Worms Eye lead off with the Tapu Koko and the Incineroar and Incineroar and Tapu Fini come out for Luigi so we're going to see the electric terrain overwritten by that Tapu Fini's misty terrain Intimidate's coming out from both Incineroars reducing the damage there and we are going to see how things kick off in this first one we see Luigi straight away switch out that Incineroar for his Landorus going to get another Intimidate onto that Incineroar on Nigel's side of the field, Volt switch into that slot, not going to be affected because of the ground typing and an all important Icy Wind into that Tapu Koko and the Incineroar as Incineroar on Nigel's side of the field going to switch out and bring in the ground on now, get the sun up and start putting some pressure on Luigi's side of the field going to see the ground UMZ now from this lander is which slot is it going to be into is it going to be into that type of coco you've got to imagine it probably is but it's not it's into the ground on it's going to try and get as much damage onto it as possible that intimidate really helping there helping the ground on survivors and it just madness comes out into the incineral slot taking it down to 50 percent health with a fire punch coming out onto that lander is now the lander is switching out cycling that intimidate again with the incineral switch on luigi's side of the field ground i'm going to retreat type of coco coming in this time getting it terrain out onto the field going to put a lot of pressure onto that Tapu Fini as a faker comes out into that slot and another icy wind so really hindering that Tapu Koko's ability and be as fast as it needs to be Tapu Fini going to switch out now predicting an electric type attack into that slot Incineroar getting the intimidate onto the Incineroar as we do see a Electrium Z activate on the Tapu Koko it's going to be that Gigavolt Havoc and it's going to be into the Incineroar slot here it, it probably will be enough oh it's not no Luigi is EV in so well to survive that in new turn coming out into the Tapu Koko going to retreat and waste that Z move and get the Xerneas out onto the field for Luigi now as a great Great time for him to start setting up with this Xerneas as you see the Incineroar on Nigel's side of the field switch out straight away for that Groudon as we see the Lander switch out now for the Incineroar going to pressure again with that Intimidate support all important for that Groudon and the Tapu Koko switch out again fearing the, the Earthquake from the opposing Lander of course as we see Incineroar come in for Nigel's side of the field it's a revolving door of Pokemon as we see the Xerneas go for that Geomancy boost it's going to boost itself up power up get the boost to cross the board and become very threatening very quickly what is the Groudon going to do just lock into a fire punch not going to risk that precipice blitz here as the sun does fade we we'll see a fake out now into the Xerneas slot a fake out into the Groudon slot a burnt turn here but the Xerneas now in such a dominating position as the Incineroar does switch out going to cycle that intimidate again onto the Groudon and the Incineroar as a dazzling gleam comes out going to pick up both targets here And now the stack attacker coming in for Nigel. So it's not out of the game just yet. That stack attacker can do a lot of damage. Can the Tapu Koko and the stack attacker deal with this Landorus though? Because that is the one thing that is putting a lot of pressure on Nigel's side of the field from Luigi. We're going to see a Dazzling Gleam come out from the Xerneas. And it does critical hit with an Earthquake following up. Not worrying about hitting his own Xerneas. And doing enough damage to take down that stack attacker with the combination of Dazzling Gleam and Earthquake. Now Koko is sitting by himself as we do see a Dazzling Gleam come out. Uh, again onto this protect double protect here is the earthquake again gonna hit the Xerneas again for big damage but not taking it out quite yet as the Tapu Koko goes for that third protect dazzling gleam coming out as the protectors fail and Luigi taking game one big win there for Luigi massive game so we'll go into game two we're gonna see Nigel switch things up now with the Incineroar stack attacker as we see Luigi go with that 
Tapu Fini and Incineroar again. That all important Intimidate from Luigi side of the field onto the stack attacker going to really help support that there. Got to worry about the Trick Room mode on Nigel's stack attacker that it could go for here and get that ground on in early doors. We are just going to see the Incineroar again switch straight out for that Landorus here. Cycle that Intimidate again onto both these physical type attackers as a Fake Out does come out and onto that Landorus slot and a Nature's Madness into the Incineroar as the Trick Room does get set up from that stack attacker. Landorus switching out straight away again. Going to get triple Intimidate onto both of these physical type attackers. They're not going to be hitting for any damage as the stack attacker just protects here and a U-turn from the Incineroar. It's got to be the Groudon coming in and it will start pressuring. But it's not. It is going to be the Eveltal coming in on that slot as we see a heal pulse from the type of Fini going to heal off that tiny little bit of chip damage on the Incineroar there. Stack attacker now retreating going to recycle those Intimidates that it's had so many of with the Incineroar coming back in and return the favor as we see a low kick from the opposing Incineroar into the Incineroar doing a bit of chip damage as a Nature's Madness into the Veltal. Going to do decent damage taking it down to 50% health with an Oblivion Wing coming back out into that type of Fini. Seeing the Incineroar switch out now and the Xerneas come in ready for when that trick room does end faker coming out into that slot then another nature's madness into the Veltal, chipping it down slowly as it goes for another oblivion wing this time into the xerneas is going to recover some of that health back but now we're in a really tricky position because if the protect comes out from the xerneas and we see the incineral come in for luigi it's got access to that fake out it will be able to burn this last turn of trick room and get its geomancy up and put itself really dominant position but is nigel acting on that getting the stack attacker in a good position now it's not intimidated anymore and it is going to pressure that Xerneas to switch out this next turn I'm going to see the Eveltal just switch straight out for the Incineroar, get that Intimidate onto the opposing Incineroar on Luigi's side of the field and provide Fake Out support here. So you see a Fake Out into the stack attacker, going to prevent that turn from setting up here as we see a Geomancy from the Xerneas here. It's going to get boosted up as that stack attacker has been faked out, it's not going to be able to move this turn. Cinero now switching out again for Lander is going to cycle more Intimidates and this is the beauty about Luigi's team he's got that double Intimidate and he cycles it so well protecting the Xerneas in the meantime to fake out coming out into that Lander slot and a Trick Room now being set up from that stack attacker got to imagine the Lander is switching out for that Incineroar going to cycle even more Intimidates to protect the Xerneas now it's in a nice position to start denting Nigel's side of the field as a Rock Slide comes out not going to be doing very much though because of those Intimidates as a Flare Blitz comes out again from the Incineroar but Again, not enough as it does proc its own berry, giving the Incineroar all the health back it needs as a Dazzling Gleam comes out. No flinch there from the opposing Xerneas and doing big damage to that Incineroar and really threatening it going into this next turn. Xerneas is going to protect now going into this next turn as a low kick coming out into the stack attacker but detected from Nigel's side of the field. A bit of a burn turn as the Xerneas now switching out. Crazy after those Geomancy boosts but sacrificing itself for later in the game when it knows it needs to deal with that Xerneas later on. Cycling that Intimidate and taking very minimal damage from the opposing Rock Slide as a Flare Blitz now coming out and not doing neg negligible damage to that Landorus. Able to take it. Landorus going to protect and stall out this Trick Room as another Rock Slide coming out from the Stack Attacker. Still not enough to take down the Incineroar on Luigi's side of the field just proccing that 50% berry and getting all that health back and putting itself in a really nice position as it is flinched with a knockoff coming out into that Landorus. Now the Trick Room does end. Rock Slide going to come out, going to be able to pick up the knockout on both of these. Very low health Pokemon taking down the Stack Attacker and the Incineroar and a low kick coming out just to make sure that Stack Attacker does go away. Tapu Koko coming in with the Eveltal now on Nigel's side of the field and Landorus in a very nice position. It is threatened by this Eveltal but you've got to think it can do a lot of work as we are going to see the Tapu Fini switch in now. Get rid of that electric terrain, that big boost that Tapu Koko's got access to here as it does protect Oblivion Wing now coming out from the Veltal into the Tapu Fini slot. Going to take it down to 50% health. Just return some of that health that it's got. So you're going to see a U-turn from the Incineroar back into the lander. Going to cycle Intimidate again and now the lander is going to protect from any damage from that Eveltal as we see a Z move from the Tapu Koko. This has got to be into that Tapu Fini slot. This will be enough to pick up the knockout here. Take down this one Pokemon. You've got to think if you are Luigi here you need to just deal with that Tapu Koko. Once that Tapu Koko is gone Xerneas can come in and potentially pick up the knockout on that Eveltal but these constant Oblivion Wings from the Eveltal causing 
Luigi so many problems. We see the Incineroar now come in. It's got access to Fake Out, as we see the Tapu Koko just protect. Does Luigi detect this? Fake Out into that Eveltal. Is it a Rock Slide? It is a Rock Slide. Can it be enough to take down this Eveltal? Not quite enough. It is able to hang on, but it is flinched, and we've revealed now that this Landorus is faster than this Eveltal. Dazzling Gleam coming out from the Tapu Koko, but going for an Earthquake now onto both targets as he is able to pick up the knockout onto the Tapu Koko as well as the Incineroar. Now the Oblivion Wind coming out into the Landorus is going to get a little bit of health back, but you've got to think with this Xerneas coming in, even if this, the Eveltal has got access to Sucker Punch, it's not going to be enough. And we are going to see a Moonblast. It is faster and it is able to pick up the knockout and Luigi taking this game. So huge win here for Luigi going into this one. And uh, congratulations Congratulations to both players, but what a great set for us to kick off in today's episode. Now we're going to move on to our next set, and it is going to be Jay versus Alex. So exciting to see this one. Both new players to the circuit this season. We are going to see Alex lead off with that Smeagol and Xerneas, and Jay lead off with her Dustman across my and Clefairy. We're going to see straight away protect from this Xerneas as a protect comes out from the Dustman across my and a protect. From the Clefairy, protect all around, lovely case being revealed now. Into that Clefairy slot as a Moody Boost comes, special attack, boost and evasiveness fall from the Smeagol. Gonna see a follow me now from the Clefairy as we see a Geomancy boost straight away in front of this Dismay Necrozma from Alex's side of the field. Gonna get those boosts up and where is this Smeagol gonna aim this lovely case and does it hit? It will be into this Clefairy because of the follow me. So putting it to sleep, hitting and taking that follow me out of action for the rest of this game until it wakes up trick room being set up now from this dustman across as we see more moody boosts and more evasion balls for this smeagol clefairy staying asleep this turn as azernius does go for the protect Sunseal strike into that slot and a lovely kiss now putting alex in a great position as Jay is unable to take advantage of a trick room here not great as now clefairy is able to wake up though and it does protect this turn as a follow me comes out from that Smeagol. We are gonna see the Necrozma stay asleep here as a Moonblast comes out into that slot doing good chip damage, but with that friend guard ability from the Clefairy really helping it out there. Now the Smeagol is gonna go for another follow me, just protecting case that does mean Necrozma wakes up as a heal pulse comes out. Gonna go into that Smeagol though, and a Moonblast coming into that Clefairy now, doing big damage, but it is able to hang on just barely here. So accuracy does fall on the Smeagol, not gonna help those lovely kisses in future as we see a follow me again from the Smeagol protect from that Clefairy. Necrozma does wake up here and go for that Sunsteel Strike. Gonna be into that Smeagol slot. Gonna do a lot of damage. Take it down to its focus sash but making sure that it is hanging around for next turn as another Moonblast into that Dustman Necrozma. As the dimensions turn back to normal you've got to think a follow me and a Dazzling Gleam here is gonna put Alex in such a good position but you've got to think as well that Trick Room could get set up. Lovely Kiss going into the Clefairy is gonna miss though. Dazzling Gleam coming out as it does is a Enough to pick up the KO onto the Clefairy, but the Trick Room is able to be set again by the Dust Man across my. Spiky Shield here from the Smeagol. No protect from that Xerneas as it does get a, a Sunseal Strike into that slot. As a Snarl comes out as well, Xerneas actually hanging on and able to get one more attack off. Gonna be probably enough to pick up the knockout here on the Dustman across me, which it is taking that big threat down. Huge, huge turn here for Alex, but the game is not over yet. Jay still has a Kyogre in the back coming in now. Gonna get the rain up and really start putting some pressure on with these big water spots in the rain. We do see Groudon come in from Alex's side of the field. Gonna disrupt this rain. Gonna get the sun up and start putting the pressure back onto Jay's side of the field. As we see a U-turn come straight out from this Incineroar. Not gonna go for the, the fake out this turn. Just gonna try and pivot out, but no pivot here because it's the last two Pokemon. Flare Blitz coming in into that ground on water spout from Jay's Kyogre is enough to get the ground on but not enough to get the Incineroar and um, the Xerneas as a Moonblast comes out into that Incineroar and the Kyogre left unchecked here so the Kyogre is still posing a big threat we're going to see the Kyogre just protect here one more turn as we see a spiky shield from the Smeagol no fake out here from Alex's side of the field and another protect just going to burn out these trick room turns as a snarl comes out from the Incineroar and the dimensions turn back to normal and this Xerneas is in a prime position to start putting on a lot of pressure 
picture. I'm going to see a wide guard now revealed from Alex's Smeagol as a Moonblast coming in. And it is into the, the Incineroar slot and picks up the knockout. What is the Kyogre goes for a Scald and it does pick up the knockout onto the Xerneas. So taking that down, really nice detect there from Jay. Picking up and not going for the Water Spout. Detecting that the Water Spout would and the wide guard may come out. We're going to see a Follow Me now from the Smeagol. Going to protect that Blossom that comes onto the field. Grass not coming into the Kyogre and Kyogre tanking that really well as now the Waterium Z is revealed from this Kyogre. Going to be doing big damage but unfortunately into the wrong slot here as that Smeagol has Follow Me pulling in that attack into its Sash just doing all of but one HP. Taking that down and now the fight is on. Does Jay have Ice Beam and we've just seen a Scald come out not doing enough damage especially into this grass type that Blossom is. Another grass not going to come out. Pick up the knockout next turn you've got to imagine as a leftovers is good information for jay going into this next game as another skull comes out the burn not really helping here as a grass knot is able to pick up the knockout onto the Kyogre and Alex takes game one big game and really good set for us from both of these players Going into game two here, we're going to see Alex lead off again with that Smeagol Zone. It's caused so many issues for Jay in that first game. And Jay actually adjusting her board position going into this game, leading off with the Ludicolo and the Kyogre here. Got that fast fake out with the Ludicolo. Can we take advantage of that? Spiky Shield and Protect coming out from the Xerneas and the Smeagol as a Skull coming straight out into that Smeagol slot. going to see just the Smeagol switch out now. Groudon going to come and get rid of that rain boost and get the sun onto the field. Get the advantage weather-wise on Alex's side as the Skull comes into that Xerneas. Geomancy coming out from the Xerneas now getting that boost and becoming super threatening super quickly. You've got to think if you're Jay here you've got to get that Kyogre off the field so you can get the rain back in. Get rid of that Groudon. That is the big thing here and then it frees up a lot of room for you to spin the crossman to come in and start really causing a lot of pressure onto that Xerneas. We're going to see a Hydro Vortex, but because of those Geomancy boosts, it's not going to be doing enough damage. Groudon going to switch out now, but also going to hit the field for Alex as Kyogre does switch out. And we're going to see Zapdos onto the field. Really throwback Pokemon as a Moonblast comes into the Ludicolo. Going to be enough to pick up the knockout there, um, but it does create room for the Incineroar to come in, which has that fake out support. So, what is the Zapdos going to do? It's going to be interesting to see. Blossom switching out now. Groudon going to come back in for Alex and the Xerneas does protect here as we do see a Tailwind from the Zapdos going to provide that speed control and a Snarl coming out from the Incineroar. We're going to do a little bit of chip damage to the Groudon which is always helpful. Now we do see a Moonblast from the Xerneas into the Zapdos and it is it does pick up the knockout. Oh unfortunately the Zapdos is not able to take that plus two Moonblast as the Snarl is able to come out from the Incineroar but you've got to think now with the Tectonic Rage being revealed from Alex's Groudon. This is going to be more than enough to pick up the knockout into this Incineroar and just leaves that Kyogre in the back and that is not going to be enough against a German Seed Xerneas and the Groudon going to be able to switch out and switch back in to get that Sun back up for Alex. So it looks like the game is just going too far of reach now for Jay but doing so well in this match. Xerneas going to protect here from any attack from the Kyogre as a water spout comes out. I'm going to take the Smeagol down to its Sash but with that Groudon laying in way in the back. You've got to think it's just a matter of time before this Kyogre does take, is taken down. We see the Groudon now switch out for that Smeagol. Alex is going to protect that for later on in the game. Get the sun up, disrupt that rain and then get the Moonblast. The Kyogre taking it very well as the Skull comes out into that Groudon slot and picking up the burn which is very, very useful. The Tailwind now pairing out for the Kyogre as the Moonblast again comes out and is enough to pick up the Kyogre and Alex taking a game two and and what a great start for Alex in these two weeks. Um, off to a great start, but great games from both players here. Now we are going into our next game, and um, unfortunately this next game is going to be Shade versus Hectic, but because of a disconnect in game two, we do not have a second battle this week, which is really unfortunate, but we do have the first game, so we will get straight into that, and uh, we'll be able to show you this game one, and I will reveal the result after this match. So we are going to see Hectic lead off with that Incineroar and Xerneas and Shade lead off with the Whimsicott and Sogaleo. What a nice lead here. Interesting matchup this one will be. Going to see the Full Metal Body activate. Not 
not affected by that Intimidate support as a fake out does come into that slot as Whimsicott sets up the Tailwind for Shade on that side of the field. Moonblast coming out into that Whimsicott, just taking it down, getting as much damage onto it as possible, not wanting to risk the Geomancy in front of this Whimsicott in case it does have Encore. I'm going to see that the Xerneas now switch out for the Tapu Fini as a helping hand from this Whimsicott coming out from the Solgaleo Super Power into that Incineroar is enough to pick up the knockout. Big play there from Shade, taking down one of the big pivots for Preston's side of the field. As we see the Xerneas now return to the field and it is very, very threatened by this Sogaleo as we are going to see another helping hand and it is going to be the Steel Z move. It's got to be into that Xerneas slot now. The Xerneas probably thinks because of that superpower minus one, you're going to be able to take this attack. We're going to have to put some overlay over this animation because otherwise it's blocked and I can't put the video up, but we are going to see the Roly Poly Steel type attack into that Xerneas. It is going to pick up the knockout. Huge play here for Shade and taking a massive early lead here. The, um, the, the Icy Wind now coming out from the Tap of Finney, going to be able to pick up the knockout onto the Whimsicott, but the Sogaleo, because of that Full Metal Body Act, Ability isn't affected by it. Now we've Veltal coming in for Preston and putting a lot of pressure on to that Sugale. We're not going to see a switch out though because of that Tailwind still in effect. Going in and doubling in on that Tapu Fini with a Nature's Madness and a Sunseal Strike. Just going to proc a Berry and it looks like the Wiki Berry on the Tapu Fini there. Not quite enough to pick up the one hit KO onto that Pokemon. But the Veltal returning with a foul play and picking up the knockout into Sogolea as Zygarde hits the field now for Shade getting that Misty Seed boost and becoming very threatening very quickly we're going to see a protect there from the Zygarde another Nature's Madness coming out from the Tapu Fini into the opposing Tapu Fini on Preston's side of the field as we see another Haze come out from Preston's Tapu Fini going to get rid of those Seed boosts there's another Nature's Madness now returning into the Eveltal going to take it down to 50% health foul play coming out into the Zygarde as a Nature's Madness returning from from pressing side of the field into the Tapu Fini. Thousand arrows coming out from the Zygarde. Not going to be enough to pick up the Tapu Fini, but put it in range potentially for an extreme speed here as it does go for that, picking up the knockout onto the Tapu Fini, going to prevent any heal pulse action at all. But we do see the heal pulse from Shade's end onto the Zygarde, going to put it all back up to full health. Oblivion Wing now coming out from the Veltal into the Tapu Fini, going to get itself up over 50%. Tapu Fini getting the proc on the berry, the Wiki Berry getting all of that health back and an nature's Madness coming out into the Eveltal. Foul playing now into that Zygarde. Going to do good damage as another Thousand Arrows coming in and picking up the win. And Shade taking an early lead here in game one. And as I say, we only have game one from this set, which is super sad. There was a disconnect right at the end of game two, which didn't allow both players to save the game, which is really unfortunate. But what a set. And Shade actually went on to win this one. So massive props to both players there. And, um, Shade off to a very nice start after week two as well. So congratulations to him. Going to really look forward to seeing both Hectic, Preston and Shade going forward in this tournament and see what they can do as the weeks go on. So the next match we're going to feature and the last match of the day is going to be Xenophist Ace versus Pinko as we see the Mewtwo and Tabalele come out for Pinko and Serena and Kyogre for Xenophist Ace. So we're just going to take it easy commentating through this one because it is very fast paced and we'll just highlight some of the big turns there. Serena going down from a double in from the top of Lele and the Mewtwo. Mewtwo revealing that Psychic Seed on there, boosting its special defense, making it very dangerous and losing its item as well. We are going to see the Lele eventually go down. Kyogre come in for Pinko now as we see a side strike into that Incineroar on the switch in. Not going to affect it too much as a water spot coming in. You can see the defensive capabilities of that Mewtwo with that that defensive special defensive boost is it does eventually go down to an incineral but cortana now coming in next to that kyoga gonna be more than enough as it does get a critical hit into the opposing incineral on the switch in and a water spot gonna be enough to pick up the ko onto the opposing kyoga and pinko taking game one pretty early here as we go into game two and we're gonna see sogaleo and tapafini come out of an assist xenophist ace as he does switch it up straight away to get the intimidate onto both the cortana and the as Katana reveals 
Tailwind this first turn getting some nice damage into that Incineroar with a Sacred Sword and a knockoff coming into that slot. Not opting to go for the Flare Blitz there. Maybe missing an opportunity from Xenophis there as Rosa Red comes in and the style points are all on your side of the field my friend with that Pokemon. It has got the Misty Seed there and getting the special defensive boost so I'm going to be able to take this Water Spots a little bit better as Electro Web now coming out with Speed Control from Pinko. Pinko really helping like doing a lot to control this match with his Tailwind and his Electro web putting him in a really nice position just making it easy for him to get that Kyogre in a position and just really overwhelming Xenophis Ace with what he is doing so Pingo does manage to take the set here and take the win in week two so that is all of the games from week two we have had some incredible matches just a massive shout out and thank you to all of the players and um, but what we'll do now is we will go into the results of week two we did see the first match johnny versus pokemarty johnny won two nil shade beat hectic two zero pinko beat xenophist ace two zero all these two zeros this week no ties up or anything like that. Krim beating Yorin 2-0. Stu beating Bebum 2-0. Alex beating Porygon J 2-0. Will beating Amaji VGC 2-0 and Luigi beating Wormseye 2-0. Now we didn't feature one match this week and we have to respect our players each week. Sometimes these players have teams that they don't want to feature because they are playing in other events and on this occasion Amaji VGC had other commitments that he was playing and he didn't want the team featured this week. But I'm sure he'll be back next week so we will be able to feature hopefully him and will in our next week's episode but they are the results so we will get into the leaderboard and uh, we can take a look at how things are shaping up after week two getting exciting so we're seeing johnny will luigi and Stu and alex all tying for first place here we're seeing johnny will and luigi kind of running ahead there with the the, the win difference there all 2-0 wins there on their side of the field after two weeks so really nice to see them doing so well then we've got Alex down in fifth tying there for first place just a win difference there with Stu just a little bit different there just keeping them behind from the others Shade down in sixth place with Krim just behind him Pinko now pulling himself up to eighth with that big win this week Nigel down to ninth after that loss this week Urine in tenth we've got Imagi in eleventh Pokemarty twelfth Hectic down in third 14th, 14th for Porygon J, 15th Bebum and Xenophist Ace down in 16th. So things shaping up really nicely going into week two. But the thing is, we're in very early stages of this tournament. So you cannot imagine anything yet. It's very early days. All these players still have each other to play. We've got a bunch of games left. As you can see on the screen right in front of you, we do have 13 more weeks to play in this circuit. We'll obviously be condensing them as we go through. We'll have double weeks and single weeks just to make sure that we do hit all of the numbers in the time that we've got left in the moon series but very exciting so that wraps it up for us guys i hope you've enjoyed today's episode it's been absolutely crazy covering this week i've enjoyed every single match and it's getting better and better as we go on so i hope you've enjoyed it we split this episode over two episodes so i hope it's more digestible for you all if you've missed one of the parts go back and check them out they'll both be linked in this video and in the other video so you can check them both out but thank you so much for tuning in just a massive congratulations to all the players this week i am so excited going into week four and uh, three and four next week and it's going to be a double week next week so it's going to be double games from every single player so it's going to be very exciting and i cannot wait to get into it but i'm going to end it there thank you so much for tuning in leave your comments in the comment section below leave a like on the video subscribe to the channel if you like it and if you are interested in taking part in the flinch squad circuit going forward the ultra series will be starting very soon so we'll start signups in the next probably four weeks for the ultra series so get your interest in and uh, i will let you all know about it when that does drop so thanks again guys take care of yourselves and we'll see you for the next one so until then take care and bye bye